Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Affirmation Addict Podcast. My name is Pyle, and today we're talking all about money. I wanted to create an episode for you. If you have no idea where to start and you're just getting started with manifesting and specifically manifesting money, and you just need a little bit of like a crash course and what to do, a little bit of pointed guidance specifically around money. So that's the inspiration behind this episode. I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of a precursor as to how money energy works, share some personal realizations and lessons with you, and then give you the rundown on actually what you can do, tangible things you can do, different perspectives you can adopt, and just a way for you to kind of move the pathway forward and start your journey with manifesting more money. So diving right into it, how does money energy works? You have probably heard the phrase that money is just an energy. And I want to just take a second and dissect that a little bit because when you hear something a lot, you're like, yeah, true. But what does that mean to you? How do you actually interpret that is so important because it's going to impact like you're, it's going to set the foundation for your entire money manifestation journey. And this is a recurring theme for anything you're trying to manifest. I talk about this in my guide. I teach this whenever I'm teaching about manifestation, that your foundation is actually setting the tone for the rest of your manifestation journey. Your understanding of the process, your understanding of money itself, and your personal definition of money makes a difference as to how it shows up in your life, which is why manifestation can never be one size fits all. It is so unique to you. So self-awareness, self-check-ins, and honesty to yourself is so key. And some of the things I'm sharing with you might not resonate. Some of them may feel like they're striking a chord, but it's not fully hitting the spot. That is totally why. Okay. So when it comes to what money energy is, I like to interpret this as everything is energy and what is energy? Energy is just cells and atoms and everything in motion. Energy actually is symbolic of movement. It is constantly in motion. It is different vibrations, different frequencies vibrating together, creating different experiences, creating physical matter, creating liquids, creating all the different types of things, creating our feelings, creating our stories and It's all just a bunch of different waves of vibrations patched together. And so when we say money is an energy, sometimes you might think of cash. Sometimes you might think of a credit card. Sometimes you might think of the number of zeros in your bank account. But when we actually dissect it and think about that a little bit more logically, That's actually just a representation of money because back in the day, money used to be gold. Now we don't think of gold as money nearly as much because we're not using that. And before that, it used to be animals or it used to be trade and spices. So money actually isn't necessarily the material cash or the credit card or the amount of zeros in your bank account. Money is more so the energy that that allows you to make a transaction, that allows you to give and then receive something in return. And that's actually what money energy is. It is a frequency that's allowing a transaction of giving and receiving. So just take a second and process that, digest it, maybe assign your own meaning to it, but it's actually not the physical thing that you're after when we're trying to manifest more money and manifest more abundance. Yes, in theory, like you would love some more zeros in your bank account, but it goes so much further than that. So when people say they want to win the lottery and they want to do all these things and then they actually don't get it, it's because it's not actually striking their own chord with why they want it. It's not actually resonating with what they want because they're not necessarily after the dollar bills. They're after what they think having those dollar bills will allow them. And to kind of sum it up for most of us, having say a million dollars or winning the lottery, what we're actually thinking and assuming that it will give us and grant us is freedom, flexibility, and security. Those are the three things. And maybe that means freedom to buy certain things. Maybe that means the flexibility to go on a trip whenever you want. Maybe that means security and knowing that your home is paid off so you have a shelter. But those are the root feelings 
And then there might be specific things tied to those. Maybe for some people, it is the freedom to be able to buy a Louis Vuitton bag or I don't know, Louis Vuitton shoes, whatever it is. Like it can give you the ability to create and get and receive um, material things. But most of the time it's rooted in those feelings. So once again, it's freedom, flexibility, and security. Those are the three root feelings. And if you have no idea why you actually want the money that you're wanting, take a second, hit pause here, grab your journal and say, write down the words freedom, now I'm forgetting. So freedom, um, flexibility, and security. And ask yourself, if I had whatever amount of money feels extravagant to you, what would the freedom, flexibility, and security grant me? What would I do with that freedom, flexibility, and security? And that'll give you a little bit more insight as to where your head is going and why you actually want the money. It doesn't have to be permanent. It doesn't have to be something that you're sticking to. It's just an exercise to give you some clarity as to where you really want the money energy and why you actually want it. Because when we skip this step, we start to just focus on the dollar amount. And then we get a little bit fuzzy because like money is just energy and the dollar amount is kind of irrelevant. So we're getting a little bit vague and we get those mixed signals from the universe and we're actually not even getting those desires that we want. So That is why I take this approach and really dissecting what is money energy and specifically what is money energy to you. That's what's actually more important than my definition, my needs, it's your needs and what you think money is going to grant you. And so another kind of important aspect to manifesting money is that allowing yourself to realize that no money will not buy you happiness. However, it can be an avenue to the freedom, flexibility, and security. So don't shame yourself for creating and craving those types of feelings as an avenue of money. I invite you to accept that. Accept that you have certain feelings that you believe money will give you because our feelings, the cool thing is that you can create your feelings whenever you want. So don't shame yourself because then we get into the cycle of we feel guilty for having money. We feel like we don't deserve it. We feel unworthy. That's when those types of kind of limiting beliefs start to step into our relationship with money is when we feel bad about it and we keep hearing the thing that money can't buy you happiness. Well, honestly, nothing can buy you happiness. You can choose happiness though in whatever situation you're in. Similarly, you can choose freedom. You can choose security. You can choose flexibility no matter what your circumstances look like. Um, And I do acknowledge that this is much easier for me to say as someone who is not really in credit card debt and doesn't owe a ton of money like I mean, I'm pretty sure we have loans on some of our extra rental properties, but like our main home, those are all things that we own outright. So we are not in a state of debt. So I acknowledge that it might feel easier for me to say this. However, I have gone through owing money. I have gone through those types of things. And money is something that we're always interacting with and transacting with. So maybe if I don't owe money, I might owe someone my time. I might owe someone my attention. So that state of like, hey, you don't understand debt, um, don't let that be a limiting belief that stops you from actually absorbing any information around money Um, because we love getting in our own way. So I want to make sure that you're not getting in your own way and giving yourself permission to actually tap into the money energy that you're really ready to receive. So that's a little bit about money energy. It is not about the dollars. It's not about your credit card. Your credit card is actually a piece of plastic or metal. And the numbers in your bank account, if you really want to go down a conspiracy theory Firstly, it's just zeros and ones. It is code. It is computer programming that is showing up. Secondly, it's digital money. It's not even cash. You don't have it in your hands. And thirdly, with how banks are, especially in different countries, it might not even actually exist. So it's actually not about the things that we actually assume it's about. It's about deeper things. And when you can get past that and kind of stop honing in on what's my bank account at, how much cash do I have on hand? Where are those things? And really understand why you want that money and what the money is symbolizing to you. You're going to have a much clearer pathway on how to move forward. So 
moving forward, I hope that was insightful. I know that was a little bit long of an explanation, but moving forward, some lessons, perspectives, things that help me manifest money with much more ease. Um, these are in no particular order. They're just little snippets of information I wish I knew earlier. So I'm going to share some forward with you. One is that money and just the act or intention of manifesting money, I think is truly about understanding and letting yourself understand what abundance is and what lack is. And it's not only about the money. I think money and abundance, sometimes people intertwine the terms. I even do sometimes. However, what I really do think the key to money manifestation is, is really getting familiar with when am I in a state of abundance and when I am in a state of lack. Newsflash, most of us are in a state of lack most of the time. That is how our society is programmed. It is not your fault, but we tend to look for what's missing. We want to fix. We don't have a habit of let me see all the good and ignore the bad. We hyper fixate on the one bad thing versus everything else is going well. That is just the way we are programmed and we're working on changing that, which I love. However, that's a pretty normal thing. So most of the time we are in a state of lack, whether it's in your work, whether it's in your relationships, you might be noticing all the things that your significant other isn't doing for you and all the things that everybody else's significant others are doing for them. That is a lack mindset. Lack comes really naturally to us. Abundance is and used to be our natural state, but we learned differently. So one really big tip I have for you is while you're focusing on manifesting money, take it as an opportunity for you to differentiate between a lack mindset and an abundance mindset in all areas of your life, whether that's with food, whether that's with your meals, your cooking, whether that's with brushing your teeth and wasting water, all of these things. And I'm not saying just go run your water up. I like, please take this with a grain of salt, but just notice where your mind goes. Does that mean you have to act differently? Not necessarily. Just notice understanding what abundance feels like that feeling of enoughness and satisfaction and more than enough versus lack. And a really, really quick way, if you're like, this feels a little too much, a super quick way for me is to tap into abundance is realizing how easy it is for me to breathe. If you think about it, oxygen, we need oxygen to live. How often do you ever wonder if there's enough oxygen when you're taking your next breath? I would guarantee probably 0.0001% of the time, right? So think about it. Um, the energy of abundance, what it feels like is knowing with certainty and not even having to worry that there is enough oxygen. You take your next breath, you breathe so freely, you breathe so um, unapologetically. We take double inhales here. We take some deep breaths, like we in we use a ton of oxygen and we're not wondering, oh my gosh, is there gonna be another ounce of oxygen? That's a really easy way for you to tap into abundance and remind yourself what abundance feels like. And I pair it with taking some extra deep breaths and being like, oh my God, I am so abundant. Like literally I have more than enough oxygen to breathe and that is phenomenal because without oxygen, I couldn't be living my human experience. So it's a really, really fun way to remind yourself that you know how to experience and feel abundant in a way that you do constantly. You're not always wondering where is my next breath going to come from. You trust that even though you can't see it, we can't see oxygen, you trust that there is oxygen. Everyone talks about how the rainforest is falling and maybe that is cutting down our oxygen. Does that mean that you're breathing differently? No, you're still breathing and you're trusting that mother nature will either create more oxygen or grow more trees or whatever it is. There is a level of trust that there will be more oxygen provided for you to continue taking your breaths. So that I think is a really, really helpful and tangible way to remind yourself of, hey, I know what abundance feels like and I experience it on the daily. Um, so it's my favorite way of differentiating between lack and abundance. Another one is when you see money energy and money as something outside of you, the more and more disconnected and separate you get from it. So one thing that's really, really helped me is just the simple affirmation, I am money, because whatever you pair after I am, you become it. And when you know that money is just an energy and money symbolizes things like freedom, flexibility, and security, 
you're saying not only I am money, but I am freedom. I am flexibility. I am security. And you're actually calling all of those things that you believe money is into your world and into your energetic field. So stop separating and seeing money or honestly any desire for that matter as something outside of you and start seeing it as you are the source of it and you're getting to experience it. Because when you separate yourself from it, you're creating a little bit more of a distance. Um, And this kind of leads into my next point, which is how do you start actually manifesting money? The one thing I would say is start to treat it like a relationship. Start to treat it like a romantic relationship. Start to treat it like you are it, that money is your boyfriend or your girlfriend or whatever, what you want it to be. But like you are in love with money and money is in love with you. Then how do you navigate that relationship? That gives you an opportunity to reflect. How have you been talking about money? How have you been treating money? How do you feel about money? How do you think about money? You get to start kind of approaching money through a much more intentional way because I think we're all really aware or have a desire for love and relationships but when it comes to money we kind of distance we put it at arm's reach because I think it triggers that lack of safety like we talked about like money equals security so I feel like when you start to treat and approach money like it is a romantic relationship in your mind in your heart in your body you are able to start recreating your relationship with money everything is a relationship like you are in a committed committed relationship with money so right now how is it how is money showing up for you and be honest with it be like i don't like the way you're showing up for me i need you in my life more but also take accountability and be like, how am I showing up for you? What are the things I say to you when I'm what say about you when I'm with my friends? What are the stories I tell myself? What are the memories I reflect when I reflect about our relationship? And really personify money as this significant other, this romantic partnership. And I think that's a very helpful way to start to reframe and shift the way you show up with money and the way that money shows up with you. Because It's really easy to kind of just be like, oh, I just need a dollar bill amount. But when you add that human personification, that is that soul connection that as humans we love and we thrive off of and we're really good at, you're able to start to really understand and get into the weeds and get into the super subtle limiting beliefs that might be unintentionally holding you back with money. So that's going to be my biggest tip for you is as you're starting, start to talk to money in your journal, start to reflect what is this relationship like and what do I want this relationship to be like? And when you start to shift it, I, you know me, I love journaling. I think journaling, if you feel like you can't journal, try it. Grab a journal and just write a letter to money. Start there. Be like money, as if it's a person, write a letter to it. And then tap into money energy and write a letter from money to you. See what comes up. Get out of your head, get into your hands, get into just writing and give yourself just one page. However big your journal is, you can be strategic, make it a small page or a big page, but just put it one page. And if you don't know what to write, write. I have no idea what to write. Even if you write that the whole page, that's going to get you out of the, I can't journal. I don't know how to journal. Number two, affirmations. I gave you one, which is I am money. And I have a few more in my podcast. I think I have some more coming out. Um, around money, but I have a ton of affirmations in the Affirmate Express episodes, but also inside of Affirmate, which is my app. So all the money affirmations are there for you. All of my guided affirmations are there for you if you really want to go in on a spiritual practice. And then the third thing is actually how you're interacting with it on your day-to-day. When you're swiping your credit card or when you're paying for something, notice the thoughts. Be like, hey, what am I thinking right now? Does money, does this going to enhance my relationship with money or kind of put a damper on it? And just start with self-reflection. We sometimes hate doing self-reflection because I think it reminds us as to why we're at where we're at. But self-awareness is probably the most important piece on the manifestation journey because Only with awareness and acknowledgement can you make changes. And once you acknowledge, making a change is so easy because you're like, wait, I have no desire to talk to money like that. Okay, next time I swipe my card, I'm going to say thank you, money. I'm so grateful I'm actually able to swipe my card and pay for this. So 
that's how I recommend actually starting your relationship with money and also just noticing when you're interacting with money, when you are using money, when you are receiving money, when you are spending money to receive a certain item, notice how you're feeling. Are you feeling into that lack? Are you feeling into that abundance mindset? And just realize money feels and is responding to you and think about how you show up in relationships do you need words of affirmation do you need consistency and commitment do you need reassurance so does money money is literally a reflection of you so what you wish your significant other did to you do that for money literally i promise you money will respond you will see a shift even if you're just noticing that money feels like a lighter topic in your life it is so powerful and honestly get intimate with it get intimate have conversations be honest be vulnerable and show up for it that is like the key pillars of any relationship so get give yourself permission to really commit to this relationship with money this devotion this unconditional love um try it it is the most powerful thing and it really, really has the different has the potential to make the biggest difference in your life. Um, and so I hope this episode was helpful. I hope you are able to use some of these things, listen to some of these takeaways and really start to apply these in your life. And these little perspective shifts, these redefinitions redef- of money and really fixing your perspective with money and creating a new story and a new script with This is what money is for me and this is what money is allowing for me because the moment you know why you want it, not only are you going to be able to build that relationship, but then you can also get really intentional with manifesting those desires rather than being so vague with money. That will help you get more intentional and more clear and give you a more direct pathway to get to where you actually want to get. So That is all I have for you. If you are getting started with money, I wish you all the abundance. I hope this episode was helpful and I will see you next week. Bye.